I'm still also learning how to grow my team mm -hmm. and be actually be that guy that's not always the doer, right? I'm that African proverb that 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 I base my company off of. You know that you can if you want to go fast, go alone. Yeah. But if you can go farther, you go together. Yeah. And I mean that's why. I mean you have a team. Right? Yeah. It's a small team. It's a small you, team. But you just still have a team. You couldn't be able to do it yourself. It's yeah. the same thing as me. I think that to save up my time, right? I want to leverage and be the rainmaker, building providing business and teaching and help empowering others but i gotta step away from that produ production and that, i mean that, that's the hardest thing for me but i'm i'm in the same spot as you yeah i think how to I, be a leader and i think every every team leader struggles with that i think that's what makes us great or good is that we're always striving for more yeah you know and so it's like i actually had someone on a podcast yesterday uh and we were talking about what sucks about being in real estate is that you never get to enjoy real estate like when things are, it's funny when things are going great, it's so busy that you're so busy building, building, building. And then when things are starting to slow down, then you stress out. About, like there's never like, when can we get to that like perfect zone? You know what I mean? Where like, and that's something that I struggle with. It's like enjoying the moment and being like, Hey, we're good. Because everyone's always telling us like grow, grow, grow. Right. And then when stuff's getting hard, Cut, cut, okay, cut. Right. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. how do you handle like trying to enjoy enjoy real estate in the moment? Yeah, honestly, I do feel like having a team of, you know, six to 12 agents. And we say team loosely because it really is, I mean, all, all various types of teams. But having a team of six to 12 agents, I think, is really the sweet spot. Yeah. Right. And I, I've, I've said before that, you know what, this guy, Jesus, yeah. had 12 disciples, yeah. right? And I, even that, one of them stabbed him in his yeah. back. So, so you can you imagine about 10 to 11. Yeah, so Jesus 10 to 11, 11, 10 11. I think I could probably do maybe 8 to 10, maybe. Yeah. And so I think that number is really the sweet spot because the culture is there. The culture gets stays. I can have influence in the culture, right? You got a big company that, that, that brings in all these companies together, like this big whole behemoth of a mm -hmm. real estate company or team. And what kind of culture does that create? Yeah. You, know, you, you can't really by culture right culture is is created yeah and so you you have a culture for sure yeah you have a culture that you can tomorrow decide you're gonna do that and you and for, do for you you do yeah. it right for me i can do that too but it's a little bit more involved if i have you a little more thoughtful but imagine if i had like 60 agents the well, i don't believe I, mean, I assume a lot of people come towards you because obviously you have a you know you're a massive company and you're out there a lot so how do you not how do you do you say do you say no to a lot of people i say no to a lot of people yeah yeah, I, in the beginning last year, I, mean, I said yes a little bit sooner than I should have. Mm -hmm. But now we, we do a, a meeting, hardly ever talk about commissions or splits like that yeah. at the very beginning. It's always just about getting to know the person. Uh, and then I introduce them to either my wife or Nancy, sale, my sales partner, yeah. founding sales partner. They have a talk and then maybe another, another team member. And then we at some point ask them to take a personality profile. Mm -hmm. disc, we use a disc profile. Yeah. And then based upon that, then we kind of make an assessment. And if it makes sense, then lastly is we have a dinner with the, them and the spouse. Oh, I think that's so months. important is like, you know, I try to tell everyone it's like, I hate when it's hard when people try to get into real estate and everything else in their life is messed up. I try to tell them like, dude, if your financials aren't in place, if your home life's not in place, like coming into this is it's not, you're not going to do well. Yeah. Like you have to have all those things in place to do well in, in real estate. Yeah. It's, it, I don't my number one question I always ask everyone when they, hey, like, I want to become a realtor, I always say, like, what does your spouse think about that? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, are they going to be okay with you coming and going, taking phone calls, especially in the first few years where you're taking calls at 8, 10 o'clock at night because, you th you know, you, you have yeah. no deals yeah. and you're trying to stress out. So Yeah, that's a huge, huge factor. So so you're, you're at, you know, what is one of the biggest things you look for? when looking for an agent so you, you go through these things you have the dinners you know like what is something you're looking for in an agent that you think that if more team leaders look for that's like a ongoing trend for good agents that have worked for you i haven't found that yet no yeah honestly because again going back to you know to, i mean we have agents that are not real drivers mm -hmm. right? you and i we're drivers yeah right? that's okay if you're not a driver then you're a great support member for the which team. is which is which awesome is, which is totally fine i think that's the problem is like Almost not having drivers is good because drivers, you know, sooner or later are going to want to drive and you can only have one driver. Right, right. So like, yeah. sadly, the driver's not always the best thing to have on the team. Exactly. So Because then it's like, oh, like, you know, they're going to leave and you're like, yeah. Sweet, I'm going to build this person up and then they're going to leave. 
Have, do you, have you struggled with that over the years with like building up agents, putting like everything into you and then them going off and doing their own thing? Happens all the time. Isn't that, it's so, yeah. it's, it's so frustrating, yeah. man. Well, if, you, if you reframe it, look at it this way. Like if, if they leave better off than when they arrive. Well, then, then you then did you, your job. You did your job, yeah. right? And, and more power to them. Yeah. As long as it's like, you know, it's done well. I've had times in which agents left in the not so mm-hmm. nice way. Yeah. And that's a little bit different, right? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that. You've done your job. This goes back to the leader thing, right? Yeah. I mean, being able to lead and be able to, you know, be able to help empower others. But doing that and doing sales and building up your own business is two different things. So when you now that you're now that you're kind of maxed on your agents, are you guys trying to hire other support staff for them? Like, what does your support staff look for your agent? You know, like we said, the difference between like a mega team and like they have ISAs, they have listing aids. So on your uh, me- medium-sized team, what support do you have to have for your agents? So you definitely have to have a good transaction support, yeah. right? And we are still, I have to be honest, we're still working on it. We've got two, two TCs, one from one to two this year, and we're probably going to need a third one. Mm-hmm. And so transaction support and administrative support. Uh, I'm the tech guy right now, so it's pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got to be able to get that support as well. Yeah. And then, of course, listing management because we do so much. Yeah, let yeah me, how many listings did you guys do last year? Uh, we did uh, 52. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. So we're going to change, yeah. change the topic. Yeah. No, right? yeah. So, ask away. So you talked about um, your team and then you don't do this and you don't do that, right? Mm-hmm. But okay. So, so as an individual contributor, an individual agent with the support team, how do you, how do you be accountable? To myself? Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, what holds me the most accountable is rent's due on the first and payroll goes out on the first and the 15th. Like that is the number one thing. And, and what people don't understand is like the people that work around me, like my lender, photographer, home inspector, any of those people, all my support, like I truly believe like my job is to provide for their family. Yeah. And if I don't go out and work, then I can't provide for them. So like my assistant, we're, we, we're best friends. Like I talk to her every day and we talk about her family we talk about work we have a great relationship but like in my head it's like i have to provide for her family like she's the number one provider for her family right. so if i stop working then what's going to happen to them yeah. and that's what really drives me more than clients more than anything else it's like my job is to provide for all these people so that there may be a fear there of growing bigger then because i have to provide for my people too that's true and it's, 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 it's scary it's twice, twice that's as much, why that's right? why maybe i don't have a right? team right. because i don't want to provide leads yeah. to them because I'm not good at, like, I'm good at managing enough leads. Then you're going to be even more accountable. To exactly. have you have, yeah, yeah. I don't, so that's my thing is like, uh, and the, the crazy part is I've, I've tried to do, I've tried to do schedule. I've tried to do my, you know, every day do the same thing. And then it just kind of doesn't you're, work. You're a free spirit. You yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Well, and, and it's like, uh, or like, we'll be shooting a podcast like this yeah. or, or something will come up or, yeah. but like the funny thing is in actual transactions, I don't do anything. My only job is is to go meet people and make content. Yeah, that's it, and then solve right. problems that come up. But like right. actual transactions, I've gotten, I've gotten that to the point where we're so dialed in, me and her, where I don't handle right. any of it. Yeah, your your value is in negotiation exactly. and experience, and being experience, able to, yeah, put, put the deal making together. content goes, you know, yeah. and so that's the kind of the goal for us. But then too, like moving forward, like we're building a coaching program right now. We're gonna sell. We're trying to get, you know, obviously we're getting sponsorships on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So for me, it's like okay. Let's sell our, you know, we'll sell 50, I'll sell my 50, 50 homes a year, 40 to 50 homes a year, make a blank amount of dollars. Let's make some money on ad revenue. Let's make mo- some money on a, on a coaching ebook program that we're going to sell for brand new agents. It's going to yeah. be like what to do in the first 90 days of the brand new agent. Cause that's something I think that like, I mean, I don't know what's the coaching group here right now. Um, who's, who's the coaching group that's always here. I'm not, I'm not sure. Do you know, it's uh whatever. They're always talking about like massive teams, right? Yeah. So, but what do you, the most ni- most agents don't know what to do in the first 90 days. Right. And if you don't have a good 90 day start, you're done. Yeah. You're o- the career's over with, yeah. you know? So, yeah. so that's, I mean, that's moving forward is I always, you know, when COVID hit, that was a big eye opener to me is like, how do we make money when houses don't sell? And that's by, you know, buying rental properties, things like that. Mm. So that's my main goal now. Yeah. I always think that. I had a great conversation with somebody at lunch yesterday and like, so I truly believe that the best team is a SEAL Team 6 team. Yeah. Okay, you got a handful of agents that are really, really good top producers, each selling 10, 20 million at least, right? And that's gonna be the best, uh, at least minimum, right? So they're not gonna be a lot of new agents. It's gonna be really veteran agents that know what they're doing. 
Um, and that's the tightest team because then really I can go away and trust that, hey, it's going to be handled. Take yeah. it. Adam, run with the, the yeah. ball with this. Yeah. I got I to I do it. And then vice versa. Yeah. Right? And so you can really cover for each other. 